Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the Deceptive Lab and welcome to the first series of the new year where we are going to start talking about war tactics. And I'm breaking this down into a little mini series. Uh, it should be about five parts. Just trying to see how we can sharpen up our war tactics. And maybe I'll even learn something myself, you know, as I've been talking to a lot of you guys on Discord and everything else. So let me go ahead and get everything set up and I'll be right back. everyone and so today like I said we're gonna talk about uh, just different war tactics well we're gonna start off the series about war tactics and one of the things that I'm gonna be working on specifically is going to be team build so this this particular video we're gonna focus on team build and so when I start off talking about team build uh, one of the first things that I start off talking about and I'll actually pull that up is that we have different types of bots that we want to use for different functions on our war teams. And so <clears throat> the first type of bot that I want to talk about is going to be what we call your meat shield. Uh, typically, this is going to be your warrior class bots that you use um, just to soak up any kind of damage as the game goes on, as the battle goes on. So let's go take a look at some of our warriors, and we'll go add a couple of additional classes I mean, a couple of additional bots from other classes into that as well and so let's go over to the battlefield and we're going to look at our warrior class bot specifically so for me uh some of the ones you can see the ones that i use heavily um ramjet we'll talk about later on i don't really consider him a meat shield but tantrum is actually pretty good and i need to go and add and this this is my live account i'm looking at right now and what you're looking for is really, really high health out of your meat shields. And so I'm using like bots like Tantrum. Uh, the biggest fallback for him is the Force Field Disruptor, the FFD. But this is a bot that you can use to soak up damage. But right now, what I'm really high on is I'm really high on Block. Just because he's not going to be affected by the FFD. And he has the any, any type of your bots that have holograms like that. Can, they, can, that can, they can soak up damage so your bot doesn't have to. Um, right now, I still got bot at a relatively low level. I want to get him up over 60 this weekend. But And this is not going to be an all-inclusive list. But I will tell you this. Um, they're going to be just different bots. Like even Dino Bot too. And a lot of people now have him at a 5-star level. You know, you got the holograms from him. Uh, Nightbird, for an example. You know, and, and honestly, if you guys caught my last live stream, one of the things that I was looking at was a warrior class rework. And so hopefully some of those ideas go through. But really what you're looking at, and you can look through all of my different warriors, those are the guys that I'm depending on to soak up a lot of damage, uh, especially if you got them in a five-star level. Now, in addition to that, there's some other bots that you can use. Like, for example, you look at a bot like Soundwave. You, when you look at it, hit that level at 66 here that I have on my lab server, you can see he's pretty close to the same amount of health points as I had for Tantrum. And he also has minions, so when you get bots that can go, you know, provide minions to soak up some damage, you can use them in that meat shield category as well. Right now, I've got them set up for defense, so I got Pterodactyl and I've got G1 Soundwave. But you can always use the Quintus Prime Core as one of the preferred um, combos for um, pairings for uh, Soundwave. And honestly, Pterodactyl and um, that Quintus Prime Core is it's one of the primary ones that you need for Wars, period. We'll talk about, you know, combat and uh, power cores in a future video. But for now, know that I've got them specifically set up for defense right now so with that g1 sound wave core that's what i'm using to try to get create additional stun but um yeah you know so sound wave blaster up there on that side 
Uh, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of your different warriors, like Tantrum and Hotspot for the Autobot side, I didn't mention that earlier. Those are the kind of bots that you're looking at. But really, when you just go look at the tanks, period, that's the type of bots we're talking about as a meat shield. All right, so then you're going to start looking at your outpost poppers and sack bots. And so when I look at my outpost poppers, um, some of these bots can actually go into more than one category because right now I use right now I use uh, Blot as my outpost popper because I can pretty much go set that hologram anywhere. But then when you start looking at other outpost poppers, then you know you have guys like Ramjet that you can use. The key drawback being the motion sense in mind. Um, so for Ramjet and Goldfire, uh, that can become an issue, which is one of the reasons why, and I'll talk about, like I said, power cores later on, but this is one of the using, reasons I use the Vector Prime core on Ramjet. Um, you know, any of your hologram bots, like we were talking about Dinobot 2 again, or and, and Dinobot and Dinobot 2, you can use as outpost poppers. The only issues you have there is they kind of follow their holograms, so you have to be careful about that. But you can use any of your meat shields, uh, the rush in tank types. So when you start looking at bots like Bludgeon, when you start looking at bots like uh, Headstrong, Tantrum, like I already mentioned, you know, to some extent even Rampage or even like C Clamp or something like that, you can use as a rush in tank. Um, and then you get some. You got some anomalies like Cola, Cola Gun, who can do a little bit of both. Uh, here, I only got them at the four star level, but if you guys have seen my video on Cola Gun, you can use them for very, very high attack damage to his special ability. And with the Malvamous Prime Core, his health is pretty much off the charts for really the four star and the five star, but particularly the five star. All right, so we also want to talk about that you're going to have ranged bots or gunners so i'll to actually take a look at my own war team and you can see what i'm actually using currently is a war team because and i talked about it on my last live stream but you want to have a certain amount of range bots so in this case i've got knockout and i'm actually doubling down on that i'm using crater maker with him um and so one of the things we wanted to talk about when you talk about ranged bots, now you could use traditional gunners or you could use what they call gunners, which will be your, basically when you go use one of your air class bots and you go give him uh, a ranged combat. Well, like I said, we'll talk about combats later on, but a lot of times that'll wind up being like your crater makers, your fire line, uh, or flak and top shot for you on the Autobot side or even someone like Fracas and Nightstick that you can use to go get a, add, add additional range to your bots. So in this case, I have two gunners. I've got Knockout and Brawl. But you really just got to figure out what works for you. Um, I've seen a lot of people who use uh, the five-star Trigger Happy. I haven't gone into that batch yet. But I think that's a really good one, and it does substantial amounts of damage to the base. But um, So you definitely want to use your range bots options uh, as well. And I'll talk about a little bit more about team build, because there's two types of strategies that I really want to talk about later on in the video. All right, so you want to start talking about your wall busters. So for me, the wall busters that I use are going to be... And I don't use them very often, but they are very viable. And so I'm going to go into the warrior class for a second. Because the key one that most people use is going to be Straxis and Sludge. I only have the four star and I only got them at a pretty low level. Um, but that multiplier that you get from that seismic charge, uh, the more walls that you're able to get within that range, the bigger the multiplier or the more that multiplier is going to take effect. So it's going to have that uh, that additional damage towards the walls. You know, in this case, it's got five times damage. I still got them at level one. But um, the more and more, especially with front loaded bases becoming more a part of the meta, the more and more walls that you can affect, 
the more damage it's gonna do overall to the walls. So that's one type of bot that you wanna look at. There's some other bots that do substantial de damage. Uh, for me personally, I actually like to use, I actually like to use Beast War Megatron. You know, and for you guys on the audio, on the Autobot side, you know, obviously that'll be, um, that'll be Monkey Prime. You can go use for wall busting. And what I actually do is I add the wall busting core. So when it goes, does those random jumps, it kind of takes the place of a uh, sack bot. So when we were talking about your outpost poppers, and I really didn't kind of finish on that because on top of having guys like Ramjet, you know, this first spot I usually reserve for just different types of outpost poppers. So it could be blot. It could be that I use some of the tanks. Uh, runabout. And uh, yeah, runabout's becoming really, really popular these days. Or if you look at some of my previous videos, you can even see when I use run em up uh, because of his ability 11 to make him invulnerable. And so any kind of rush in tank and any kind of, you know, the Snapdragon is a good one that people are using, sack, of, sack strategy, uh, lug nut in Alita 1. Uh, anybody that can get to long distances uh, without really taking a lot of damage, you want to consider for that sack bot slot. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I didn't, that's why I didn't dig into it too much. All right, so for one shot kill bots, you want to use anybody that is able to do substantial amounts of damage with their special ability. So in this particular case, I use Blast Off and Fire Fly for you guys on the Autobot side. And, you know, here you can see that with the assistance of his G1 cool, I can do 9,349 damage. I just changed this core yesterday, but you can also use your enhanced ordinance and get the same amount of damage now i just get a little bit more protection with the g1 core and then with this ability 11 you can do additional damage off to the side but it it doesn't always have to be a bot like that like um you know i've seen people that a lot of people now are starting to use um shattered glass thundercracker and they also starting to on the autobot side using shattered glass jet fire and so that's one of the things that you want to think about when you're going to make your five-star pulls. Um, just because, you know, I think I think having a good one-shot kill bot is pretty good. It's a, it's a good investment. And when you actually go into the current batch, which I haven't touched, SG Thundercracker does substantial amount of damage. But really, it's just like you're looking for typically one of your aerial class bots um, that can go in there at good range to go in there and just do enough damage to take out uh, this different different structures. Now, one thing you got to look at right now, I'm looking at my missile launcher, which I have not upgraded for HQ-18 yet, but I'm looking at the building health of that particular building. And so even when I go upgraded for HQ-18, it's going to 6,864. One of the things that you want to be cautious of are what things you can destroy in one shot and which things you can't. So for me, having a maxed out blast off and we saw that his damage was over 9,000, you know, um, you know, no pun intended for, for those of you to watch Dragon Ball Z or anything, <laughs> but um, here, you know, I can take out a mortar, I can take out a missile launcher. I won't be able to take out like the MDS or anything like that alone. But well, I take that back. I won't be able to take out the MDS when it has the additional damage uh coming for it in war. So right now we've got like twenty percent additional health in wars that'll push it above the threshold of where I can damage it with one shot, especially when I've got the shield generator activated. But um yeah, just doing normal battles, you know it's got you covered. You know, all in addition, you know, you can see the auto cannon is outside of that range unless you already soften it up somehow uh, or use a battle boost, then it's outside of that range 
of where I can one shot kill. But I know a lot of people have been concerned that the one shot kill is not as relevant as it once once was, but it's still gonna be applicable for a lot of different things, particularly when I look at like beam lasers or something like that. Looking at the beam laser and looking at it, it's building health. And then I look at the fact that it's adding additional damage right now as part of the Titan effect. And I'll actually go take a look at it and I'm gonna jump out of the screen for a second so you, ooh. And that's the wrong, oh, jump out of the screen real quick so you can see. But then you can see that beams are doing 30 more percent damage. So it might become more of a priority for you as you start to try to as you start to try to figure out what things to target with your one shot all right so we want to look at also you got your speed and your dps boosters so in this particular category some of the bots we're talking about you're looking at bots like motor master uh and let me go find him so you got motor master which i got as a four star and you can actually see his ability to overcharge your sparks with a lightning burst. Uh, in this particular case, it's 243% damage, but you know, Motor Master does have a five star as well. And you know, he still got some levels left out, left. I only got this one at level eight. And some, some of these guys you can double dip with because they're in a particular case, like when I was looking at the warrior class bots, um, Rodimus Unicronus, you know, is actually, going to in an inferno for you guys on the Autobot side can give you an increase but he also increases your ability damage too and so one of the things that I actually joined I actually joined text the Titans uh, he's got a, a inferno room right now where you use um, where you can learn ta tactics about using Rodimus Unicronus and inferno and um, lots of video going on in there and just lots of just explaining how to get the most, how to maximize the use of this bot. Uh, for me, I got the rank points available too, so I can try to push them a little bit further. Uh, not that great on the health side, but overall team boost. So it's always something that you can use. So that's one of the bots I talk about. I also, and you probably, you might have seen my video on this before, and I'm starting to try to build him up a little bit. But one of the bots that I love using, and let me see if I can find them real quick. It's going to be Crankcase. Good speed booster. And I don't typically go run my bot's uh, abilities up until I'm, they're ready, war ready. And so right now I've only got them at level 53. I'm working on them a little bit every day. But just uh, adding attack speed and health boost. So anytime I can add speed. Even even a bot like if you look at my war team, my speed booster that I use is gonna be cutthroat. And that's just him using his ability eleven to go give you a boost from it. So if you can find any bots to do speed boost, I mean this like I said, it's not an all inclusive list. Uh, speed boost or like even like a, a slowdown, a debuff. You know, you you got some options there, but like cutthroat and tracks make you you can make anybody under that cloud fifteen percent faster, and then it goes into another area that I was talking about, and that's your bots that you use as your protectors. Now we already talked about the meat shields, but like when I use cutthroat as a protector, it's from that it's from using that smoke to go block. In this case, with the ability 11, 60% of the damage, and that lasts for 21 seconds. But there's other bots that I use too. So, like for me, I might use like a Nemesis Prime, who you also see on my war team, uh, just so I can use his ability 11 to protect not only another bot, but he can protect himself uh, as long as you're not under anywhere the area of effect for the force field disruptor. You know, when I was talking about earlier about run amok and red alert, uh, same thing. They've got a shield that they can use to protect just themselves at ability 11. And then the last, the last group you're gonna have is gonna be 
and I didn't put it up here on this screen, but then you're going to have your healers as well. And so for me, um, there's a couple of ways that I like to approach this. I either like to use one healer with a lot of individual healing, or I like to use two healers. And so when you look at my team build, one of the things that you'll see is that a lot of the bots have individual healing. And so like for, we'll talk about power cores later on, but like in this case, Impactor has Amalgamous Prime Core, allows them to heal himself. Um, you know, Nexus Prime doesn't have anything healing himself, but like Knockout has the Alchemist Prime Core. So that gives you some more source of individual healing. And then even when you go look at my one shot kill bot like Blast Off, he's got Fracas to provide healing to him uh, throughout the duration of the battle. So that's one concept that I've really been beating in everybody's head is to try to make sure that you have uh, different sources of healing. And what that does for you is that prevents your healer from having to run around too much because these guys are healing themselves. Like even with Cutthroat, I've got him paired with Singe so that he can constantly heal himself. This is usually like my last bot that I'm able to keep in a battle. All right, so the next thing that I want to suggest when you're building a team is that you got to build a core of certain bots that you, typically you're not going to move. So when I look at this list, right now I've got Ramjet in that spot, but I might pull him out to go use Blot, but Impactor never leaves my war team. You know, Nemesis Prime leaves my war team sometimes, but rarely. Uh, right now, Knockout doesn't leave. Blast Off doesn't leave. He's my no, you know, he's my actual one shot kill bot. Hook doesn't leave. Um, Cutthroat I've, I've, I've taken out at times, depending on different situations. But you, you want to build a cool of about three to four bots that you know that you're going to use. And what that does for you is that prevents you from, from having to chase the meta too much. You know, you know, you don't want to get into a war and say, hey man, I need a completely different eight bots. You want to have the majority of your bots say, hey, I can use them from one battle to the next. And those are the ones that you want to power level. Those are the ones that you want to try to put a lot of emphasis on and get them up to high levels so that you can use them consistently. And when I first started, what I started doing when I first started getting serious about my war teams is I wouldn't um, I wouldn't tie any of my war bots to any particular element just because I didn't want to have to deal with the fact that the war effects during certain um, you know during certain time periods would be anti fire or they'd be anti acid or anything like that. I wanted it to be something where I have options. So when you look at a bot that I have like like Brawl. Brawl I use as G1 to get additional damage from fire, but I also have a maxed out volatile mixture that I can use so that I can just turn in the regular impact damage and still get a 15.5% uh, damage increase if there are anything negating fire effects in the current meta uh, whenever that meta comes. One of the other things that I think is a really, really undervalued characteristic that I try to stick by is I like to put my bots in the order that I'm going to use them. Because let's be honest, there will be times when I switch out a bot here. Usually my sack bot, uh, one of the sack bots that I didn't mention right now because I've actually got her in the cooker, but like Flame War, you can use as a sack bot when outposts are really really close together so if i see those situations that first spot i will reserve to change whatever outpost popper and sack bot that i want to use but i like to put them in order because just in case say there's a mistake and i accidentally i, I run my sack bot and ramjet and then i accidentally deploy impactor it's nothing for me to go in there run impactor use his ability um, after I make that mistake and then drop the rest of the team in behind Impactor to, to kind of start the path that I want to take throughout the rest of the battle. And so a lot of times I see people put them in like just different orders. Put them in the order that you want to use them because it's going to make it easier for you. You don't have to, and it's one less thing to think about. 
And it also helps you keep your alternates organized because, like I said, if I wanted to take Ramjet out of here and I decide I want to use Block, Block's going to be my outpost popper instead of just using the traditional sack bot. And I just move them into that same spot and it makes it much easier and keeps it much more organized. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about, and I kind of briefly mentioned it already, but it's really two types of teams that are primarily taking over the meta right now. And so one of them is going to be your walk team. And so when I build a walk team, I'll actually leave Blot up here right now because this is what I'm working on currently as my war team. So I'm going to have at least two bots of high health. So it might be two tanks. It might be a tank in a special class that has pretty high health. In this case, Impactor is a pretty high health bot. He's around the same health as when I was talking about um, Tantrum. So what I wind up doing is I wind up using him in that spot. So you're going to have at least two high health bots. And for me personally, I like to have at least three ranged bots. And so when you look at my war team, you can see I have Knockout as a ranged bot, Brawl as a ranged bot, and then realistically I've got four because I've got I've got um, Blast Off using Fracas, and so that you can see that that range on him is extra long with Fracas uh, equipped. But I've also got Nemesis Prime right now with that five star Crater Maker, so that puts him in a decent range too. And that, what that allows you to do is that allows you to have blot and impactor soaking up all the damage and the rest of these guys just kind of just adding firepower from the back so we're saying two two tanks or high health bots three range and then you want to have what i feel like you should have is at least one healer in this case i've got hook but like i said those range bots could be gunners gunners special class who anybody's going to have a ranged attack and then you add the healer behind them. And if you use the concept of individual healing, one of the things that you'll see is your healer will actually work a lot less harder because it's going to go to whoever doesn't have the individual healing. And it'll, it'll pretty much stay locked on that bot the entire time. And then that leaves you a couple of, of wild card spots that you can use. If you, if you only had two tanks and if you only had three ranged, then you got some wild card and one healer. Then you got two wild card spots that I call them that you can use for any t different type of bot. So some of the combos I like to use, like I said, mentioned earlier, you can use double healers. Uh, you can add a protection bot in there if you don't already have one wall buster, speed boosters, or you can add a fourth ranged bot like I've done in here. And sometimes you can use a hybrid of them because like a, a bot like Nemesis Prime, I can use as a protector and an additional ranged bot with some high DPS. Now, when you go build a sack team, you can pretty much do the same thing. The only exception is you just add a sack bot. So like I said, Lugnut is actually usable. And I would actually use Lugnut more if I had the five star. I'm actually got 50-50 odds if I go into that batch of pulling the five star Lugnut. But you can use Lugnut um, even as a four star for that. But for me, I like to use, I like, like I said, I like to use Ramjet. And keeping that first spot available just for my outpost popper slash sack bot, it really does help me just set up my team build. So yeah, like um, and I'll actually go through a battle, and I'll show you what it looks like when I go use my sack strategy. All right, so let me jump out of the screen real quick and I'll actually do a battle all right so I go into I'll go into zone 15 and so so right here is probably where I'm going to target just because that's going to be the area that's going to pop multiple outposts. I got two outposts right there. And so I'm just going to walk Ramjet up. And then I'm just going to pop 
each one of these outposts individually. Now I do, one of the things with the SAC strategy, using a bot like Ramjet, you do run into issues with motion sensing mines, but with the vector prime core, you see he comes right back to that same spot. And now I've popped all four outposts. And now I can actually come out here and use a bot like Impactor to come soak some of my damage up as those outpost bots come to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to hold off for a little bit and kind of lure them down. And now I've just target one of the minions there. And then I actually messed it up. I actually let uh, I actually let the team get in front of Impactor but it didn't really make a difference because I already had it figured out. And then you just have so many ranged options. You want to start looking around and seeing if there's anything that you need to take out for. Make sure that you're not taking excessive damage. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and take out the missile launcher on the right using my one-shot kill. And then for a bot like a bot I have here, like Knockout, I can actually use him to take out huge clusters of defenses. Now, right now, I do believe that his uh, ability is going to be reduced. But right now, I'm also in zone 15, so he probably can take down those defenses anyway. But when you get into the actual wars, you might need to use a combo for him. But overall, it becomes pretty easy. Uh, let's see. All right, I want to go back to the lab for a second because I want to emphasize some of the biggest mistakes that I see uh, just from players that, they, you know, whether they ask me for advice or whether it just be in any particular alliance that I'm in, that I've been in uh, over the years. And so some of the biggest mistakes that I see, a lot of people get attached, way too attached to one particular bot. And it, and it could And it could be a couple of different reasons for that. And I'm actually going to pull one up real quick while we're talking. But one bot that I see people get overly attached to is this dude right here. That four-star Skull Smasher and Warpath, uh, people just get attached to. Now, keep in mind, most of them actually carry their ability. They max their ability out. But either way, like the as the game has grown, as defensive, as we had HQ-17 and hq 18 and i feel like that's outgrown that ability a little bit but you can still use it for certain things like picking off spider mines and picking off build bots and stuff like that but i don't i think people get too attached just because they use that bot in the past and you gotta you gotta be able to recognize the changes in the meta when certain things have outgrown and Case in point, for me, one of the biggest ones that I had to adapt to is I, would, I, I put a lot of emphasis on Tantrum. I cleared out that entire batch to get Tantrum and FFD I, I, to the point that I went and used, saved up a bunch of XP cores and everything else. I saved a bunch, a bunch of XP and just, I, I, I took Tantrum to like level 60 in like a day when I got his five star. And... FFD came out like the following week or maybe two weeks later. And when I first started getting some advice, when I first joined the Horde, they were saying, yeah, man, you know, we all love Tantrum, but as a Russian tank, you know, the meta has changed a little bit. You know, the FFD is there, and, you know, the damage has increased to, at that point, it was uh, HQ 17 and a half. And they said, you might want to consider using another meat shield. And that's what I did, and I wound up having a lot of much success after I did that. Um, a lot of people just use the same bots over and over again just because they maxed them out. But like when you could see when I was looking at Blot, Blot's not anywhere near maxed out, but he's getting the job done. So ideally I like to use my bots after they get over level 60. But, you know, sometimes that's not the case. You know, he's got decent health right here, but sometimes I gotta give him a little bit of an assist through the use of the other bots on my team. And yeah, he's got the Micronus core on him, so he's constantly gonna be healing himself a little bit anyway, as well as his allies. 
and then the fact that he's got a hologram to protect him a little bit. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, another another big mistake that I see is I see people uh, completely aborting the bot just because of a counter. And let's be honest, most of the counters in the game, so like the motion sense in mind, uh, a lot of people just stop using Ramjet and Goldfire over this. But like, let's be honest, if you go use it a certain way, I'm looking at the motion sensing mines, there are still small gaps around here that you can find. So realistically speaking, I could come and jump Ramjet out here to this outside of this mortar if I go to the very bottom edge, and I can jump him straight up here to these two outposts. You know, I can jump them up there. People just don't do that as much anymore. They just kind of tuck their tail between their legs after a counter is introduced. Like on my base, one of the examples that I give you is that I got the lightning rod core up here. People still come use sea spray or, or octo punch on the front half of my base, even with the reduced damage. But what they usually do is take out the build bot. So don't be afraid to say, oh, what well, the the counter is just a build bot. Take out the build bot. Uh, another mistake that I see people making is a lot of players that I know that aren't very good at wars, they just go in and they spark every bot they see. But when you notice, you can see who my war bots are and who I use as alternates because they're all a very high in power up here. Um, and don't neglect your other bots. Make sure that you put your other bots on teams because you never know when the meta changes and you might need them. But um, always put all of your resources into your main bots. Don't try to focus so hard on the non-war bots uh, overall. So for me, I actually level all mines passively uh, just through events and through regular Z farming and regular uh, attacks throughout the week. Um, Another issue that I see, I see a lot of people just take any bot that they have as a as a five star, and they just throw them at the wars. They, you know, so I see guys that mix and match certain teams. And I was actually talking to some people in Discord the other day who were surprised that I took Soundwave off of my war team, and they were even more surprised when I took off, you know, the Quintus Prime Core. But I said, but I told my response to them was simple. When I was fighting sharks and I needed more beef up front, that's when I used them. Not that I don't, that I dislike Soundwave, but when I go look at his damage per second, and I see it is 481, and then I go look at the guy that I replaced him with, who was Knockout, and I found a way to keep him healthy through the Alchemist Prime Core, then I want to go for the more damage. And if something is taking place where I need to protect my bots more, not take Knockout out, I put Soundwave back in. As an, and for an example, I used Soundwave heavily when we had those sharks on defense in the Cybertron and Prime League Wars. Another thing that I've seen, speaking of which, and now I'm going to go flip over to my cutthroat again sometimes people just number numbers crunch a little bit too hard and so the biggest thing that i see is a lot of people get tied to a certain part of the meta that points is prime cool you know a lot of people say well i want to have it on a bot that's got a lot of health points and then you got some people say well i want to go put it on a bot that's got a lot of damage points for me I like using this because when I go use this with Singe, and Singe gives me, you know, in this case, at the four star level nine, 85% healing every five seconds. And the damage from the sharks from the Quintus Prime Core actually factors into that. I actually tested it yesterday or the day before. And it's a good combo pairing, but most people will tell you that you need to use that. That 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 cool that Quintus Prime cool with Pterodactyl or or um, Teraxodon. 
and that's just not true. So don't be so confined to anything in the meta that you don't, because you start numbers crunching, like this combo really, really works. And when we start talking about power cores and combat bots, I'll actually talk about that more. Uh, but one thing that I always tell my players, even if, even if it is something that's considered the meta, just because it's not the most effective does not mean that it's ineffective. If something fits better for your team, like everybody's saying, oh, I can't believe you dropped Soundwave from your war team. Well, it was a better fit for me to go use Knockout, and I only got eight slots. Other thing that I really hate to see when I look at people's replays, I hate to see people put bots on their team that they have no intention on using their abilities. And the bot that I see that with the most, I see that most with Optimus Prime and Megatron. Like a, if you're gonna use the tactic where you're going to, if you're not using sack, you're gonna use a rush base or something like that, or maybe you do sack and still rush the base, then cool. But if you're not gonna use that tactic, you're not gonna use that ability, and there's no chance that you're using that ability anyway on that base, then does that bot actually need to hold a spot on your team? One of the things that, I, that saves me a lot of ability points is I got a lot of different options on how I can deal damage on this team, as you could see from when I was playing earlier. Uh, let's see, last couple of things I want to look at that I see as mistakes. A lot of people just don't try out bots for themselves. A lot of people will, and, you know, I YouTube, I content create and everything because I want to help people out. But don't take my word for it. I always tell people, Try something out. Make sure that it fits your play style. Make sure that it fits anything that you feel comfortable with in your wars. Ultimately, this is your game. And sometimes you might discover something that, you know, none of us content creators thought of or any of us play testers thought of. And that's normally the case, um, especially like when you start looking around and see maybe they, maybe there's counters and stuff to the game. It's probably because, oh, the play testers play a certain way, but then when it got released to the public, and the public said, hey, I found a completely different way to play this. So to keep that in mind also. And the last thing that I want to talk about that's been a huge mistake that I've seen from a lot of people is I see so many people that get caught up in the lore of the bot. And they say, oh, man, this bot was fantastic in the G1 cartoons. But maybe they didn't make that bot that great in this game. You gotta try to use bots that are good in the game. Like this is a strategy game, and this is a game that's really centered around the wars and all the battles that take place. Uh, make sure you're using the bots that are a best fit for your team. But all right, uh, let's go back to the lab for a second. And I just want to thank you guys for watching today. Um, like I said, this is gonna the plan right now is for this to be. The first video of a five-part series about wars. I think next time we're going to talk more about combat bots and power cores. So yeah, man, like just um, take what I said to heart when you when you're looking at team building, just kind of try to put together the best team you can. But if you do need additional help, I'm going to have uh, I've already started having people share their war teams in my Discord server. I'll leave the Discord server. If you are not already a part of the Discord server, I'll leave the link for that in this video. And if you want me to review your war team, I'll actually do that on my, on my weekly live stream uh, starting this Wednesday. I've already got about, I think about six or seven of them in my Discord uh, with permission to go in there and discuss their war team on live stream. So go ahead and do that out. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. And so you never have to worry about missing any of the content and missing any of the advice that I have to give about Transformers Earth Wars. And in addition to just getting all of the new news that comes out uh, regarding Transformers Earth Wars. But um, that's all I'm going to do for this video. Like I said, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys this week on my weekly live stream and in the next video and i'll also see you on the battlefield freezius out